Hey there, how's it going everybody? Just want to share with you a quick tip today as I get ready to start to plant out some pole beans and climbing peas. Now there's a very important first step that many gardeners may still not be fully aware of its impact and that's to inoculate your beans and peas with a rhizobium bacteria before you get them into the ground. Now there's many different ways to accomplish this but I find this to be the easiest and quickest method. So the first step is to simply empty out the beans and or the peas into a bowl or a glass jar. Now there's many different rhizobium inoculants on the market. You're just going to want to make sure that the inoculant that you pick up is specified to work with the type of seed that you're planting. Now there's no exact amount to use in this process. Now you can get away with using just a small amount of this inoculant mixed with the water, but you can't overdo it either. So I'm using a nice rounded teaspoon of inoculant per half pound of seed. Now I'm adding in about double the amount of water as there is seeds as they're going to be absorbing a lot of that water. And I'm sure to just mix this up really good. So from here, these seeds could be planted about an hour after sitting in the solution, or like I'm doing, you could wait overnight. If you wait too long, however, like maybe 24 hours or more, you're gonna have to add in some fresh inoculant as its effectiveness starts to wear off after about a 24 hour period. So why is it so important to do this with beans and peas anyway? Well, first and foremost, is so that we can achieve nitrogen fixation in the soil. These type of plants actually have the ability to convert atmospheric nitrogen into fixed nitrogen in the soil. To do this, there must be a symbiotic relationship where the nitrogen-fixing bacteria interacts with the roots of the host plant where it forms nitrogen nodules. These nodules not only help feed the plant itself, but its surrounding plants as well. This results in a more vigorous, healthy plant less susceptible to different diseases and can also contribute to a higher germination rate. Well, the fact that this is so easy to do and inoculant is relatively inexpensive, there's really no reason to not do this. Another quick tip is once you're done with this process, you're going to want to store that inoculant in a cool and dark place. That's going to prolong the shelf life of the product, giving you many more applications to come. Well, that's it for now, everybody. I hope you found this video helpful or entertaining in some way. And so with that, I hope this video finds you and finds you well. Take care, everybody. I'll be talking to you again soon.